Bible study with HSI. I'm Megan, and we have Glenn with us today again. Hi, Glenn. Hi, Megan. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much, because these classes are so informative. informative. Um, so last class, we concluded with um, verse 25, where we said, where Jesus said, Therefore I tell you, do not worry about your life, what you will eat or what you will drink, or about your body or what you will wear. So from what I gathered from that is the fact that life in this verse didn't literally mean life, but it meant soul. And how Jesus had called for us to be whole in spirit, in mind and in, in heart and in our spirit and in our soul. So uh, basically, he, he also called us to be hardworking individuals and not to be procrastinators because that was not what we built for. And that is something also that we learned that Paul had reiterated in his letters to the Corinthians and Galatians and Ephesians. Right. So now, uh, after he has spoken all of this, <coughs> I do not be worried about, do not be worried about your food, your body, your clothing. Uh, he give, uh, uh, he gives us, uh, you can say, seven reasons or seven arguments for why you shouldn't do that. Yeah. And he will give us uh, reasons for that, and that's what we are going to see now henceforth. So it begins with, um, is not life more than food and the body more than clothing? Okay. So Jerome will say, Saint Jerome says that, uh, commenting on this. He who has given the greater, mm -hmm. will he not give us the less? Yeah. If God has given us the soul and he's made us his children, called us his children and uh, given us his own Holy Spirit, so we now belong to the Father. We are like divine particles. We are like now part of uh, citizenship of that kingdom. We have rights in the kingdom. He's done so much for all of this. Now, you think after he's given us all the greater things in our life, the greater spiritual riches in our life, don't you think he will not give us the lesser, more lesser, like the food, the, food, the clothing? Then, yeah. You know, why do you worry about this when he was giving you the greater? Is he going to leave you like this and say, I'm not, uh, forget you completely? He knows he, because he created us. He knows that human beings, uh, we sustain uh, we with, with, with these with things, things because we are earthly human beings. Chrysostom will say that, for he had not willed that which, uh, for he, had he not willed that which was, which was, should be preserved, he had not created it. Mm -hmm. But he, what he so created it that it should be preserved by food, it is necessary that he give it food as long as he would have have it to be preserved. So mm -hmm. if he created us, like we said, he will preserve us. Yeah. He, he knows that we need food, clothing, so he will preserve us. And that's what Chrysostom says. And therefore, this is the first reason, mm -hmm. first reason that why we should not worry. Because if he gave us the greater the most important things in life, why will he not give you, why do you think he will leave you aside yeah. and not forget, and not think of the lesser things? You know, that is what he says. So God who gave us our souls and bodies, cre who created them out of nothing and who continually, as if it were, uh, recreates them, he surely will give those things which are less as food and clothes without which the body cannot subsist. And Chrysostom will say, when God is our feeder, mm. there is no need to be anxious for the rich have wanted and suffered hunger, but they that seek after the Lord shall want no manner of thing that is good. Mm -hmm. So, so let us so let us uh, keep this first thing in mind that why we should not worry. Practical reasons, you know, reason it out. He's, he's uh, the Lord is saying now reason it out in your mind. Think about it. If he, he's, if because you see God is Jesus has come to establish the kingdom. He's come to inaugurate, bring something new. He's the promised Messiah for the Jews. Remember yeah. Matthew's writing the Jews. And uh, and he's and God and God has come in the in your midst. The Messiah has come for, for the Jews, and and he's come to bring the kingdom of God. He's already begun with as he began the Sermon on the Mount, mm -hmm. the good news, the, yeah. the 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 way how the kingdom works. He's already began with this whole thing about kingdom kingdom on the Mount. He's spoken about uh, uh, what he called uh, the the blessed are those the beatitudes. He's spoken about uh, rejoice. Uh, uh, because uh, your reward will be great in heaven mm -hmm. when you go through persecution. He's spoken about uh, he's spoken about the moral law. You know he's and he's and he's spoken about the our father prayer. Yeah. He's you know he said and there is all uh, rewards attached to fasting prayer and asking. It is making us excited. He's saying I've given you all of this and don't so do not be worried about the lesser things now. He will provide. Yeah. You know this is the first reason that if God gave you life, if God re uh, think about the many times how God. How uh, or think about the time when you first experienced the Lord in, and you had a deep conversion experience. How you encountered the Lord personally. Mm -hmm. How the Lord rescued you and 
and uh, you you had a uh, you 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 repented of your sins you were washed you had a, some kind of healing mm. uh, inner healing within you a deliverance in your life how god rescued you so many times if god god is so concerned about you, you know about your spiritual life about uh, your eternal life you know and and, uh, and making sure that you reach heaven safely which is your final destination remember saint paul says he who began the good work in you is faithful to complete it mm. and what is the good work good work is all about the salvation yeah. the good work of salvation that is begun in you he will ensure that he will that he will fin- it's not you going to work through you work out your salvation although saint paul will say that work out your salvation with tre- fear and trembling it means that we have to cooperate with god with the work of salvation that we are called mm-hmm. that he has given us and he's going to accomplish it it's through his grace yeah. so that uh, t- tomorrow when you reach heaven you will have no Uh, there is not going to be any chance for you to say that it was i who did it it was he who was doing all it through his grace yeah. so if god is going to do all of this for you what makes you think that he is not going to give you the lesser the food the clothing shelter which are which are the secondary yeah. the primary is the the spiritual and the secondary is the earthly you know yeah. so this is what uh, so this is the first uh, reason now the second argument that he makes or the second reason is he says look at the birds in the sky they do not sow nor reap they gather nothing into barns yet your heavenly father feeds them are you not much uh, of more importance than they this is the second he's saying now reason out the second reason why you should not worry you know yeah. practical reasons and uh, and if god feeds the irrational birds who are not even anxious about their living okay we we we've seen how birds yeah. we've, seen, we've seen birds everywhere and he gives them corn and food which they have not even labored for you see yeah. we are laboring but they have yeah and doesn't mean it does it's people use it as a means to say that i shouldn't work and i i was i was one of them in the early days of my youth and i was i was thinking that uh, that oh uh, look at the birds not even labor they're, they're not even ga- not even reaping nor gathering so why should i work but that's a wrong mentality we already made that clarity in the previous session yeah, we, we are called to labor so if uh, if god feeds the rational birds who have not even labored for how much more will he feed us uh who who we are people who are created in his image and likeness we have reasoning yeah. we we can reason it out because we are rational human beings and we are created after his image and likeness and we are not only that we are also his sons we are sons of the father you know mm-hmm. and uh, he and he has redeemed us with his son's own son's blood yeah. jesus blood we are redeemed by his blood so he he compares now here is making comparison men not uh, as one of the commentary says he compares men not to the oxen of the earth mm-hmm. but to the birds of the heaven mm-hmm. to teach them that they ought to be heavenly like the birds that's what uh, you know uh, the the spiritual understanding is and that we are we ought to fly away in spirit from earth to heaven mm-hmm. so uh, and expect from god necessary food both for our souls and for the bodies, bodies. and that's we are called to be like birds flying towards heaven expecting yeah. god to not only feed our souls but he will also feed our body bodies. as well for the birds are contented with provision for the day and they are not anxious about tomorrow but they rest calmly on god's providence and give up their leisure time to flight and song mm-hmm. you know birds chirp right they yeah. sing right and that is what we are called to be look at he said look at the birds how relaxed they are singing they are praising they give they they thank you and they are singing and that means they are so relaxed they are not even laboring and you who labor and work hard don't you think you i'm going to not provide for mm-hmm. you this is what jesus reason it out jesus says and chrysostom will say he might have brought forward the example of moses elijah john who are not anxious about their food mm-hmm. but he preferred to take irrational birds okay that he might the, he might the more deeply impress his hearers for why for why cannot men do what the birds do mm-hmm. this is what chrysostom will say why should men be anxious when birds are not yeah you know is something to think about if birds are not even worried about about their food and they don't not even laboring and not even worried about it and they are they are, they are like flying to and fro in the sky why should you worry then you know you were created in my image and likeness you know and, and therefore he chooses to take birds saint francis he had a wonderful delight in birds if you know saint francis was a man who he's used to even preach to the a, animals even yeah. so the animals would come Spain to him saint for yeah Asian yes Asian. correct so uh, saint francis has a wonderful delight in birds especially in larks okay okay and used to invite them to sing the praises of god mm-hmm. this is saint francis so a little after his death the story is a little after his death some larks came and assisted at his funeral and in a vast multitude they flew to the roof of the house in which his body lay mm-hmm. and circling around it with gladness more than common they celebrated the praise and the glory of the saint mm-hmm. 
such was this kind of uh, the saint you know this i had no idea about yeah so he was a uh, he, that's why he was a man who was even the uh, the birds of the air the animals would listen to him you know mm-hmm. such was saint francis of assisi he was now saint francis uh, cont- the story continues he was accustomed to compare the brethren of his order to larks okay okay that's the story and to exhort them to imitate them he exhorted his his his, his order people of his uh, of his order to imitate for the lark he said has a crest like cap if you notice how a lark is it has a crest yeah. like cap so also the friars the miners in his order mm. wear a cowl or hood to put them in to put them in mind that they ought to imitate the humility and innocence of boys who hide their faces in their caps okay so that was uh, saint francis way of uh, uh, adopting this kind mm. of uh, uh, their 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 uh, what do you call uh, the attire that mm. they have you know the monks would wear yeah. it also says the the lark is of ashen color if you notice the lark it has got a light gray or dark yeah. gray ashen color and the frock of even the frock of the brethren the miners mm. or saint francis were also of ashen gray so he adopted completely the method of the larks you know no wonder the larks came and so the circle around, around him, him. It's because he was so fond of him so the the brethren of his uh, mind uh, of his order wore ashen gray to put them in mind of the saying of god to the first form man remember thou art dust or ashes and unto ashes you shall return. return so this is saint francis of assisi larks also they live in poverty without anxiety mm-hmm. and they pluck the grains which the earth affords so also the brethren profess poverty so this is one of the vows that the uh, saint francis order took the vow of poverty mm-hmm. they live they live by begging without care placing their hope of a harvest in the providence of god and the charity of the faithful see they had nothing for themselves you know they were people who would not uh, uh, what do you call own anything for them because they had taken this uh, this that particular vow of poverty okay so that is why they chose to live in complete providence with god they would go about doing their normal duties not that they were not but they would depend upon the, what people would give them like you know tithes and stuff yeah like okay. uh, like what people would give. so they yeah. would go and make how mother trees are <laughs> went about asking for the for his work for for the work of the lord because she had no one to depend on yeah. but she would depend and trust god that god is going to send someone and make the provision and larks it seems as soon as they found a grain and eaten it they are, are borne by a direct flight aloft towards heaven that they might shun the eyes of the beholder and sing as they fly and returning thanks to god mm-hmm. the parent who is the parent and nourisher of all creatures so th- these are the the the, uh, the way of the larks would uh, progress in their day so the also the the, the brethren of uh, saint francis yeah. do the same for man eats the food of angels it seems mm-hmm. and that is the bread asked of arms mm-hmm. the bread would people would give you know and the angel angels inside those who are rich to give the brethren when they beg so these angels would uh, inside the rich people to give them something to eat so this is how saint uh, uh, francis lived his life and ex- and exhorted his bro- brethren to also live that kind of a life yeah lastly larks are called in latin allu allowed from the from laws or the word praise mm-hmm. word larks comes from the word english word uh, praise because they praise god by their constant songs. songs so also the brethren despise earthly things and seek for heavenly because they are strangers on earth and citizens on in heaven mm-hmm. so we are strangers on earth and citizens in heaven and they know that they have been called by god for this object and they may praise him perpetually with psalms by preaching and by a holy life so this is how saint uh, francis fasisi teaches us uh, how he adopted his uh, or, uh, you know this kind of ma- uh, attitude of an of a lark mm-hmm. always trusting in god you know living a life of poverty living a life without anxiety and uh, always praising and singing and thanking god no worry no anxiety but always praying knowing that god will provide but mm-hmm. they continue to do their work you know unlike the larks who do not labor but they continue to do their work as as uh, what they have called me, called to do now saint ambrose will say the birds he says gives give thanks for worthless food will you banque uh, the birds he says give thanks for the worthless food will you banquet on the most precious feast and be ungrateful mm-hmm. who then has the feeling of a man should not blush to close the day without the singing of psalms when the birds themselves manifest their exceeding gladness by the melody of their hymns if the birds sing and praise god by the end of the day for all that has happened why should we be ungrateful people for what the lord has given us yeah. we uh, l- l- look at our lives you know we get to eat three meals in a day okay so more than that that also you know we are not left without food yeah. and and, and w- why why are we people who are very ungrateful look at the birds of the air you know 
and who should and he saint amrus will continue to say who who would not sound his praises in spiritual songs whose praises the bird pronounce with their modulated notes mm-hmm. imitate then my brother the tiny birds by giving thanks to thy creator every morning and evening and if in thou ha- has greater devotion then imitate the nightingale mm-hmm. for whom the day is not long enough to sing praise but make sweet the night watches by her melody so you by pa- passing the day pass your day by giving thanks and praise and add this to the employment of the hours of the night mm-hmm. so what is uh, saying i'm just saying that we, we we are people when you look at the birds of the sky and how the lord provides and how they sing we got to imitate them you know yeah. we who are uh, rational human beings we got to look at them and uh, jesus said look at them <clears throat> and be like them look at how the heavenly father is providing why will you heavenly father not provide for you who are uh, created in his image and likeness who have been adopted so have so this is the second argument or the second reason why you should not worry as uh, jesus said now augustine will also say you are of more value because a rational animal such as a man is higher in the scale of nature than an irrational mm. such as the birds of the air so that's why he uses the birds of the air as an example chrysostom will say for god created all animals for man but man for himself yeah therefore by how much more the precious is the creation of man so much the greater is the god's care for him if then the birds without toiling find food hmm, shall not shall man not find to whom god has given both knowledge of labor and the hope of fruitfulness yeah. this is what chrysostom will say finally i want to quote from saint jerome but this be indeed as they would have it how how it, how follows it said to men are you not much more worth than they mm-hmm. okay it must be taken then in the plain sense if birds that are today that today are and tomorrow are not be nourished by god's providence without thought or toil of their own mm-hmm. how much more men to whom eternity is already promised this is what saint jerome will say mm-hmm. so so this is the second uh, this is the second argument for us today that we uh, two arguments that we have seen two reasons why we shouldn't worry jesus says first that if god has given us a greater things in our life like spiritual riches eternity soul and everything else which which pertains to us as spoken in the book of ephesians that we are blessed with every spiritual blessing that we have we are we are our, our destination is already being finalized mm-hmm. uh, we have a citizenship we are on our way to heaven you know that is our destination final destination if he has done all of this what, what makes you think that he will not give you your food clothing which are less this is the first thing that we should uh, think about and stop worrying yeah. the second reason why jesus is saying do not be worried about is is look at the birds of the air whom i have created they are not laboring they are not toiling but yet i give them food and they are and they are singing praises to me you whom i have created in my image and likeness you ought to be praising me remember jesus said in i remember this scripture jesus said Jesus told the uh, when they were entering Jerusalem and they were singing Hosanna yeah. and Jesus told them uh, and 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 uh, they they was and these crowd were telling the disciples to stop 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 uh, shouting or stop praising and Jesus said if these people stop if these people uh, uh, stop praising the the stones of the earth was going to praise me mm-hmm. that's what Jesus said you know and it, what i'm trying to understand is that if you people who have been created in my image and likeness or whom i have redeemed by my own precious blood if you do not if you are so worried about everything and you forget about the good things that i have given you and fail to praise and thank me the 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 stones around you or the walls around you whom i who are, who do not have any yeah. life they are non living things <laughs> they are going to praise me and thank me you know yeah. and it, it, and what a shame it is and that's why jesus is saying look at them they i they, they are not hard working they are not laboring they are relaxed but i i i provide for them and are you not of much value than they i give you my yeah. i give you soul i mean god has put us on a pedestal he's yes, put us above exactly. the angels as well exactly yeah. exactly and we are eating also the bread of uh, we are also eating uh the the bread of life at every eucharist yeah. the food that comes from heaven the super substantial bread which said give us today yeah. a super substantial bread so if god is giving us so much what makes you uh, i aren't you of much uh a uh, value than the th- the uh, than the irrational creatures which i have created and whom i provide daily without fail and tomorrow they are not going to live forever and uh, and uh, and uh, what do you call they are always singing my praises not knowing that they're going to live next day but you i have promised eternity for you you're going to live with me for eternity you're going to see me one day and aren't you excited about it aren't you praising me for that why are you worried about this little thing that i do you think i will leave you like that mm-hmm. 
and so this is two things that we should take today in our mind as we as we uh, uh, meditate on this on these words of the lord that do not worry because he cares for you simply because jesus what is jesus trying to say he's trying to get into our mind that stop worrying about the thing because i know you need it you know and later on he will end with seek first the kingdom of god and his righteousness everything else will be added unto you no yeah. later on to say so think about what you say is there anything else you would like to uh, add <coughs> to this megan Uh, no, I I said my point in between. <laughs> okay, okay, fine, okay. <laughs> yeah, but, but these are very two important points, though. Yeah. But it's something to think about. It. It's something you can reason. Food for thought. Yeah, it's food for thought. You know, yeah. you you can keep this in mind. You can reason it in your mind every day. Yeah, that's right. Oh yes, that's true. I mean, why am I worried? You look at and, and so next time when you worry, <laughs> look at one of the birds. Yeah. And around you, you know. There's so many things that you've said, even in the previous class, that cumulatively have given me especially. a lot of things to reconsider or to think over because every word has so much depth correct to it. that's yeah. right yeah <laughs> so thank you all i hope you've been enlightened as much as we are enlightened i like i i look at the early church fathers i listen to them i mean i get all uh, nuggets of wisdom you yeah. know and yeah. so it's really great I and mean, it's lovely that we as a catholics can l- look to the early church fathers who been inspired so much look at i mean i'm i i'm inspired by saint francis of assisi one of the greatest saints that we ever ever had you know of assisi and what a kind of life that he lived you know yeah that for it's always good to read the life of the saints read what they spoke read the early church fathers i mean there's nothing more i mean there's i mean if listen to them and this is this is mother church teaching us through the early church fathers and it's beautiful so thank you all for joining thank you megan once again thank you so much, god bless you have a nice day